Bitcoin is going to get to a million dollars, there's no question in my mind. The question is, how much does that million dollars buy you? Yeah. And thinking in terms of US dollars again, like, what is that worth? Is it worth a house in Dallas? That house of, you know, fiat cards will collapse. But if you go onto a Bitcoin standard, you went back to a gold standard, which is very difficult. But if you, it would be easy to go to a Bitcoin standard, you know, it would be painful a little bit, but it would be, it would be much easier to do that. And it would, it could work if you actually hold Bitcoin in your treasury. The majority of Bitcoin owners who have coins in their digital wallets haven't sold or transferred them in the last six months, even though the price of Bitcoin has decreased by 21% from its peak. This implies that long-term investors are starting to see Bitcoin as a safe haven investment, expecting its value to rise in the future. This trend of long-term holding aligns with the views expressed by James Lavish during his interview with Joe Burnett, where he emphasized Bitcoin's potential to grow within the investable asset class and its resilience in the face of inflation. He wondered if Bitcoin would grow into other asset classes and praised it as a blessing, offering value in a world of fiat currencies. James Lavish highlighted that comprehending Bitcoin's future worth necessitates tackling the impending structural debt issue and unpaid liabilities in the US and worldwide. Additionally, he said that the presence of Bitcoin is a godsend, since it provides an anchor for value in a world where fiat currencies have no true worth. Watch clips from the interview for further insights into James Lavish's conversation with Joe Burnett. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more content. Enjoy the video. What do you, how do you think about the end game and like where it could go, you know, decades from, from today? Yeah. Um, well, I think there's two separate things there. There's, there's a, a what, how much percentage of Bitcoin does it become of the overall investable asset class? So, you know, you've got your, you've got bonds, 130 trillion, you've got, stocks 120 trillion you've got real estate 300 to 500 trillion depending on you know what, what you believe which is that statista or whatever yeah. you know, there are a lot of different uh, measures there whether they actually have um, mortgages included in that or if they've been pulled out it's, it's really confusing but mm -hmm. let's just say it's 300 trillion dollars you've got art and collectibles you've got gold um and then you've got this little speck yeah. you know, does the, does that speck grow and eat you know does it go Pac-Man and eat uh, all, some of those other asset classes? And which ones they, does it eat? They eat the commercial real estate, residential real estate. You know, where, where, does it, where does it start dipping into for people's portfolios to say, I'm going to reallocate some of this into that. So that's one piece, right? And then the second piece is how much inflation is there? Are we talking about nominal dollars today? You know, are we talking about, um, you know, uh, are, we, are, are we taking that future value? of money and, and just speaking in terms of that, because yeah, Bitcoin is going to get to a million dollars. There's no question in my mind. The question is how much does that million dollars buy you yeah. in thinking in terms of us dollars again, like what is that worth? Is it worth a house in Dallas? You know, uh, is it worth a car? Yeah. You know, like where, where does it, is it worth a, you know, a beer, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like literally like that's the, uh, that you we've seen, we've all seen the Zimbabwe dollar where they, they, uh, is it, uh, was it a hundred billion dollar bill or something like that? Yeah. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so will that happen? I can't say it won't uh, eventually, eventually it will, unless we get off this path. And that goes back to, we have a major structural debt problem in the world and the, and the U S is much worse than people realize because of our unfunded liabilities. And we've talked about this before. And so these, you, you just, you know, that that's this, it's this looming problem. When does that, you know, when, when, what happens that we have to face that problem? And, uh, and again, I'm an optimist. Yeah. You know, we talk a lot and we're, we're talking doom and gloom here, but I'm an optimist and I'm, Thank God we have Bitcoin. I mean, yeah. truly, I, I would I wouldn't know where to turn. Just think about it conceptually. The the fiat run governments, right? That fiat driven governments 
have no anchor to their fiat. And so that's, I mean, that's the point of the fiat currency. There's nothing anchoring them. There's mm-hmm. nothing that they're attached to that have, it has an inherent value. You know, some people say militaries and oil, like it's, it's, there's no, but there's nothing. If you take your dollar and you're like, okay, um, I want my gold. Like there is no gold. Yeah. You know? So, um, but that's the problem. And so you need something that you can exchange value in because the, the issue with the fiats keeping up with that, that tremendous innovation and D that, the the, um, disinflation right? Because you actually are, you know, deflation of goods because you actually have the more goods and services for less productivity, right? Mm -hmm. Or more productivity for less actual work, less energy, a lower amount of energy that puts these fiat countries and who have debt denominated in this fiat in a terrible position, right? Because now prices of goods are going down. So now everything is worth less. That means that and it's okay. We're getting more and more of it. This is what blows people's minds that yeah. we're getting more and more of things for less work. It's okay. Speaking about the possible switch to a Bitcoin standard, James Lavish said it won't be an easy process. He envisions a slow transition in which governments accept Bitcoin and use it alongside current infrastructure before completely implementing it. Decades or perhaps a half century may pass during this procedure. Lavish emphasized the need for institutional adoption to strengthen Bitcoin's position as a store of value. He pointed out that institutions hold the majority of people's capital, and their acceptance will promote Bitcoin trade. In response to a question regarding the greatest threat to Bitcoin, Lavish mentioned AI and quantum computing, which have the ability to produce previously unidentified attack vectors that are incomprehensible to humans. Although he recognized that he didn't fully understand the risks, he expressed concern about them. Let's go back to the interview and watch more clips to gain insights from James Lavish. I think about this a lot. It's very difficult to, to know. Yeah. Um, but my, my hope is like, so when you're in a business and, you're, and you have a back office operating system and doing your accounting or, you know, uh, you, and you want to change that, well, what you do is you, you run parallel systems for a while. So you've got this system, this old system that you're running and you're talking to your customers, you're talking to your accountants and your, um, you know, your, uh, your operations in this system. And then you spin up this new one and you run them co- concurrently for a little while. Mm-hmm. And once you feel confident this system is good, then you turn this one off. Yeah. And so I think we're going to have to do that. The government does adopt Bitcoin they can't just snap to a standard. Yeah. Right. They just add it to their balance sheet. They start holding it. They like, okay, we're going to start adding and adding it. And then it becomes something that, okay, this is really working. This is getting, this is a very strong anchor. And then we can, you know, how long that takes, it's not going to be five years. Yeah. And that's, that's a, you know, multi-decade, maybe uh, half a century kind of transition uh, in my opinion. Yeah. These things move like glacier speed. What's something that you believe that most Bitcoiners would, would disagree with? I think that, uh, I believe that institutional adoption is a positive. Okay. Um, and the most, most Bitcoiners that I talk to are like, we don't need them. We don't, you do. What, we, what people don't realize is that there's the bulk of people's capital, their investments are tied up in institutional products. You know, so whether it's IRAs, 401ks, pension plans, um, you know, it, sometimes in real estate, you're, you're tied up in these things that are, they're institutionally managed. And so institutions aren't just managing money for themselves. Hedge funds, some, some of them are, but even hedge funds have money from other people. Yes, you have family offices that are worth billions of dollars and you have billionaires. The, there's not that much money. Like, I think there's, I, I quoted a stat the other day, I think it was 70, 71 trillion, it's 71 billionaires in the U S and between the, all of them, they only have $5 trillion only having institutions, understanding adopt Bitcoin will really rapidly solidify it as that true store of value that can then compete with gold yeah. uh, in an everyday, you know, standard. And, and you can go around the world and actually 
you can execute, you can, you can actually spend, buy things with it, you know, and, and create commerce with it. Whereas right now we're just not there yet. Last question. What do you think is the biggest risk to Bitcoin? I think, um, because I don't understand it well enough yet, I think quantum computing could, could, uh, produce attack vectors that we're not aware of. And when you, when, when you couple quantum computing with this, with AI, that's something that I don't know if anybody can comprehend what could happen. Yeah. Really, truly. And that's the point of AI. Yeah. You have true general and, um, artificial intelligence. That's, that's, a, that's something that our little puny brains can't yeah. even comprehend because now you've got this, this brain that is 8 billion brains combined. Yeah. As Bitcoin's market continues to mature, a noticeable trend has emerged. An increasing number of investors are opting to hold onto their assets instead of selling during periods of market volatility. This behavior suggests that Bitcoin is being viewed less as a speculative asset and more as a long-term investment. Many investors are placing their bets on the potential for Bitcoin's value to rise significantly over time, despite the short-term fluctuations that have characterized the market. The limited supply of Bitcoin, combined with increasing demand, creates a scenario where prices could rise as more people choose to hold their coins rather than trade them. This reduction in available supply, coupled with the persistent interest from new and existing investors, may set the stage for a future price surge. However, the market is not without its challenges. Over 80% of short-term Bitcoin investors, those who have held their assets for fewer than 155 days, are currently experiencing losses, having bought in at higher prices. This situation could lead to panic selling if market sentiment worsens, potentially driving prices down further, as it has in past market cycles. The Crypto Fear and Greed Index, a widely followed measure of market sentiment, currently sits at 30, signaling significant fear among investors. This level of concern hasn't been seen since December 2022, highlighting the ongoing uncertainty surrounding the market's future direction. As James Lavish pointed out, two key factors will shape Bitcoin's future, its potential to capture a significant share of the broader investable asset class and the impact that inflation could have on its long-term value. As these factors play out, the question remains, will Bitcoin continue to be a niche asset favored by enthusiasts, or could it transform into a widely accepted store of value and medium of exchange? Please drop your thoughts in the comments below, share this video, and hit your thumbs on the like button. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe.